Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome into the next episode for our Anno 1800 guide series. So today we're going to take a look at some of the early tourist stuff and how you can go about providing their needs without having to have lots and lots of orchards everywhere and lots and lots of factories trying to support them with things they need like the souvenirs, shampoo, lemonade, jam, and all the stuff that goes with that. So with that, let's take a look at how to supply tourists. Now, early on in the tourist unlock chain, you will get access to jam. Jam is actually not too bad at all. One jam orchard can supply two hotels. That's not bad at all. But you're going to need quite a few hotels. Minimum of 10 hotels if you want, want to unlock all of the basic needs, including the Iron Tower need, or more than 10, up to maybe 15 to 20, depending on how many restaurants, cafes, and bars you have in your town. So that's going to be quite a few jam orchards. Well, what can you do to produce all of this and get away with needing fewer jam orchards? Well, let's take a look at this little beauty right here. This is my jam orchard extravaganza. This is 10 jam orchards. Definitely more than you'll ever need for your tourists unless you just go buck wild on tourists. What does this setup right here do with them all crammed together? Well, we have a trade union connected by a road to the palace. That is important because we do want that fourth trade union slot on this. So what we've got in here is the hand pollination method. This increases productivity, increases workforce and maintenance, and decreases the number of trees needed. So it increases the forest density ability on it. Optimized pruning, which is basically just a lesser version of the hand pollination method. And a get rich quick volume one, which again is just a lower volume of these. Plus it also adds attractiveness. Then in the fourth slot, I have thrown on this interspecies grafting, which gives us a slight bit of productivity, more workforce, more maintenance, but it also does citrus every four cycles. So that's pretty decent. So these guys here are producing every 16 seconds. Now, they do get kind of costly on the farmer workforce. They take 61 a piece. So just be aware of that, but you do get some attractiveness from it. So that's kind of nice too. Now I have mine further boosted as well by a Bronze Age exhibition, which is giving me extra jam and by the Department of Labor, which is giving me an additional 15%. So just be aware of that right there, that I do have some bonuses on these, uh, as well as a 30% decrease in maintenance costs. So I do have some bonuses on these, can't do a lot about them because they are on my island, but so your maintenance costs will be a little different. Your productivity will be a little different. Without the Bronze Age and the Department of Labor, this gets me down to 160% bonus on these. Now, you can obviously do working conditions if you want to. I'm not going to because that's a lot of happiness I'll lose. But you can do that as well and plus, uh, pump out even more. So, how much jam is this giving me? I did go in and remove the Bronze Age exhibition so we could get a clear view of how much we're getting. And we're getting 38 tons of jam per minute from that little setup. And again, that's going to be far more than you possibly could use. Definitely probably won't ever need that much jam right there. So it's perfectly fine. But that's a good way to get the jam you need. You could even do actually just half of this if you wanted to and do half of it as jam and the other half as something else. So I've switched the bottom half of this setup right here to resin and it's giving me about 170 ish percent on the resin so not too bad on that right there it doesn't matter that they're overlapping i still get all of the benefit from it so you can mix and match these right here if you need if you don't need as much jam you need more resin put more resin in it you can use this layout for resin as well or for cherry wood all of that of course is high life related stuff but it's setup works for all of that because these items affect all orchards Anything that says it affects all orchards will affect your jam productions, cherry wood, resin, both of those from High Life, as well as the New World. So just like the Old World, the New World can be used with these different items down here. Now, I am the New World. I like to personally use Get Rich Quick Volume 3 instead of the legendary hand pollination method or the one that gives you citrus. I like to use this one right here. Uh, this one right here affects only New World Orchards. And now it does not decrease 
the forest density requirements, but it does give you coffee, tobacco, and cocoa relatively quickly from these. And as you can see, I'm still getting a decent amount of production off of them. So I'm pretty happy with this setup right here. I'm getting some extra goods that I could use, and I have bumped up my citrus production. Now, just like in the old world, if I don't need this much citrus, then I can just swap, swap these out for anything I need. Coconut oil, cinnamon, or camphor wax, or the citrus if it's already on something else. You can mix and match these all you want and get a nice amount of production out of it. Again, it does take quite a bit of extra workforce, 52 oral arrows per building, but it's a lot better than having to have these things spread out all over your island and taking up a ton of extra room. Now, let's take a look at the last three things, and that is going to be your souvenirs, your lemonade, and the shampoo. These three items right here. Now, the way these actually work is fairly simple. The one lemonade plant can actually supply two hotels. A shampoo factory, or shampoo plant rather, can support up to four hotels. Whereas the poor souvenir plant can only support one hotel. That's it. The souvenir factories are actually pretty, pretty terrible. They only support a single hotel and they do take quite a little bit of extra input. You got to have two cotton plantations, a single camp for wax and a glass maker for each one. So how can we go about upgrading their productivity? Well, there's only a couple of items that deal with chemical plants. One is the double redundancy. Now, this affects all chemical plants, all right? It does, again, increase the maintenance cost, increase the workforce needed, but it boosts the productivity by 50%. Then there are two others that are kind of specific. This one right here handles lemonade chemical plants as well as some other high life factories and all other drink productions, and it increases the productivity by an additional 20% and gives you some ethanol, which is a high life good. And then we have the re-rendering. Now this only affects shampoo and souvenirs. Now this also increases the productivity and it gives you additional saltpeter, tallow, and dynamite every 11 cycles, which is super slow, but hey, it's a little something. These are the only three items that affect the chemical plants for tourist season stuff. So with these right here, we can get our lemonade up to 270% as well as the shampoo. And if I had the souvenirs running, it would also be at 270%. So it's not much, honestly. Chemical plants already require electricity, so they're already at 200%, so you can boost them by an additional 70%, plus 50% more if you have the working conditions increased on them. And then if you have a trade union with the local department or the palace with the Department of Labor, then you can get additional productivity from the Department of Labor base effect. Uh, as well, the Skilled Labors Act also affects chemical plants, so you can get additional shampoo, lemonade, and souvenirs, one every three cycles. So if you need even more, there's a that's another good way to get even more out of that. Try to uh, get your chemical plants within range of that trade union, of course, for the items, and then connect it up to a palace or local department with the Skilled Labors Act selected in it to get even more goods from it right there. With that, you should be able to produce more than enough of all of the goods that you need for the tourists. Now, where do all these lovely goods come from? Well, they all come from Archie. Archie sells all of the different books for season three, Except for that hand pollination method, that is a legendary and you do need to craft that in the Institute. I believe you can also find it from Benta. She randomly gives it as a quest reward and if you are at war with Benta, which is a terrible thing, you should be ashamed of yourself for being at war with Benta, but she can randomly drop it from her ships or on a main island takeover. So those are a couple of different ways that you can get your hands on the hand pollination method. However, the Research Institute is going to be just about your only way to get it if you don't have Benta in your game. 
That's just like a really quick rundown of tourist season stuff and items that affect them and how you can go about using those to boost your productivity from all of your orchards and your chemical plants to get more out of them. Now, luckily, these items were added with the High Life DLC. Before then, there were no items and you had to spam this stuff out everywhere and it was awful and it was a dark, dark time in productivity land. But now we have these lovely, lovely items that can easily be purchased from Archie and get that productivity boosted so you don't have to worry about it as much. That's going to be it for me today. Hope this video helped you out a little bit with some tourist related stuff and to get those items boosted and get all of that stuff producing a little bit faster for you. If you're interested in this layout right here, be sure to hop over onto my Discord server. I will have this layout pinned in the hashtag Anno Layouts channel, so you can take a look at it and use it for your own purposes. And with that, have a great rest of your day. See you later. Take care.